Hey guys, this is the third part of the sample mounting and polishing tutorial videos. This would be about the transverse cross section mounting. Now, if you skipped the longitudinal mounting, there was only one part that you uh, need that you missed, which is the logging of your puck, ma making a record of your puck. So I'll, I'll splice that part in at the beginning of this one. I apologize for the awkward cuts. Again, this is my first tutorial video. I'm sorry, but here it is. My sample's right here, and uh, we need to log it. We need to make a uh, a record of what the puck is and what's in the puck, because we have many samples, and if someone else grabs this puck, they want to know uh, what's in the puck, and actually, you might lose track of what's in the puck. So you, you need to log, and that's why we have this this log right here. It's also in this room, and this is for 2014 and 2015. And what you have in here is an empty form, and you will fill in everything that's in this sheet. You have a, a material information, what kind of material it is. Do you have niobium 310, magnesium diboride, whatever superconductor you have. Uh, then the project, the billet number, any, uh, you see, there's a lot of information that you want to fill in as much as you can. So wh whoever grabs this, this sheet later on uh, will know exactly what the puck is. And so I've laid my samples over here and uh, this is how I want to mount them actually. The, uh, I've, I've made my diagrams and here you have this one for sample 38. Uh, for and we have the the bigger guys, uh, the thicker guys, in kind of a, a zigzag pattern. And you need to keep in mind uh, the, again the left to right thing. Uh, I'll, you'll, you'll see when I mount them what I mean by that. And this is the sample 39, and you have all, it's four different wires, and then a copper marker. And the other one I also have a, had a copper marker. That's going to tell me. Uh, it's going to make help me identify each sample. And the aluminum block bill is just an aluminum block right there. So remember these are transverse cross sections and these wires can't stand on their own. So you need what is called a dummy puck. And what a dummy puck is, is uh, it's just an empty piece of conductament to which I've drilled these holes so I can put then my samples in there. And well, here's where it matters uh, how, how you stack your samples. You can't make a, a square because uh, if you have your samples set up in a way that when you polish this face, you're going to be looking at them this way. When I'm putting them on here, they're actually inverted. So, for example, if I look at them from the top right now, the copper marker is on the right. But if I flip this, and which will be the face that I'll be looking at once I polish this down, the copper marker will be on the left. So keep that in mind when you are uh, making your diagrams. You can't make a symmetric structure because you will lose track of your samples and uh, it's, it's very important. So how to make this dummy puck? Well, to make this dummy puck, you need this machine right here. So let me grab my conductament. And what you're going to do uh, is actually first log in. Uh, every, anytime you use any machine in this uh, room, you will have to log in and uh, make sure you check the machine that you're using. I already did that. Didn't do that yesterday because I didn't really use any machines. But today I'll be using this machine, so I already logged it in. Uh, the way this works is uh, your sample will be set will be sitting inside the, this little hole right here. You put your sample in there and you fill in the rest with conductament. After that, you're going to lower the stage with the down key here. Make sure you're lower enough uh, so that your sample is sitting well below because this, what you see right here, this part that you see right here is gonna go in in this inside the, uh, the, the hole. And just press this down. Oh, didn't go down enough. Get lower it. Press this down and twist it, okay? And then you tell the machine to turn on. So right now I'm uh, I'm just doing a dummy puck. So make sure everything around here is pretty clean. Uh, let me put the stage up so you can see the stage. So here's the stage. Make sure the stage is clean before you start. 
and it's a dummy putt, so it's empty. Uh, and then you just grab your conductament. I don't need to put any samples in it. And usually around 10 grams of conductament is good enough for a dummy puck. I will, uh, I will just eyeball it in this case because uh, I, I kind of know already how, how much 10 grams is. But there you go. So I put, put my con pour my conductament in. Make sure I lower it. I have to lower it enough so it won't, so this will go in properly. So it goes down, and then what you do is just some uh, make sure. Usually, from the previous run, there's traces of conductament on this uh, on this piece of metal here. So make sure you take them off because uh, those pieces of conductament won't let you push this in all the way. So I push this in all the way until it. It's see as it hits the bottom here, and then and then I twist it, and it's ready. All you have to do now is press the cycle start button, and the machine will start pressurizing, and then it will heat up for 10 minutes, then it will cool down for four minutes, and it will beep, and your sample will be ready. In this case, my dummy puck. All right, so let's let's just wait 10 minutes. I'll be back. All right, so it's done. Now uh, the way I take this out is just. Twist it, bump it up. Alright guys, let me jump in here for a second because we've had some issues in the past with some people moving the stage up uh, when the lever is not perfectly aligned and jamming the hell out of the machine. So you have to be careful. That happens because um, the, the lever has to be perfectly parallel, I guess, to what the back of the machine would be. Um, you can because you can actually overturn it and if it's not perfectly aligned the locking mechanism catches on as you're moving on up the stage and, and it's not completely engaged it, it shears the metal of it and messes it all up so be careful make sure that before you move the stage up that lever is perfectly parallel to the back of the machine or, or if your point of reference is the the piece that connects the base with the head then it should be 90 degrees um, just be aware of that. Don't don't mess the machine up, or or Bill Bill will get really mad. Mm, and that's it. Let's let's just go back to the video. And there you go. Now, here's uh, make sure you clean everything after you're done. Uh, take take your puck out. This is what a dummy puck looks like. Clean all the excess conductament and for the next person who's going to be using this machine you want to peel off that layer of conductament that is on this piece of metal so they don't have trouble putting their the, uh, using the machine there. now the previous dummy puck I made of course uh, I showed you earlier it had some holes for my samples I need to go and drill holes in this sample and sand the edges uh, a little, sand off the edges so, so it can actually go back in here and we'll put my samples on it and fill with more conductament. Hopefully you have, uh, you, you've used a drill press before and it's in a bell sander. If you have not, uh, make sure you ask Bill before you use these. Uh, so let me go drill some holes and I'll be back. Okay, so I have my, both my dummy pucks here with their respective holes according to the diagrams that I've made and one last thing that you need so basically what we're going to do is we're going to put the we're going to put the pucks in there the dummy pucks put the samples in and then fill in the rest with more conductament um, for the filling conductament that that second fill you you want to grind down the make the conductament a little finer so uh, we just use the coffee coffee grinder over here and you just add some conductament in it. I already have two scoops in here so I'm going to add one more. Uh, there you go. Scoop two or three and then just, just like grinding coffee make sure Make sure it's a, a lot finer than uh, what the product was at the beginning. And then, 
and then you just, you know, there's usually uh, um, a little bit of that. If, for example, there's there's more that I need here, so I'll just leave that for the next person to use. But right now, was we were running out of uh, of it, so I will just pour it in this little container. And there you go, you got, you got plenty of really fine conductivity that it will fill in much better now uh, inside these holes that we have over here. Okay, so uh, let's start with sample, uh, I believe is 30, 39, 38. Yes, sample 38. So this is this is what we have here, and uh, that's what my diagram will look like. And once I put this in here, now I need to uh, put my samples into the respective places. So let me put my copper marker there, and this sample right here. Make sure you push it in all the way down. down here, all the way down keep in mind how tall your samples are so you don't want to run out of conductivity because this this thing will come down and pressurize your sample and if it doesn't find if the powder only reaches to the right here the rest of your sample is going to get crushed and and your sample is ruined so I need to add enough conductivity to make sure it will fill in all over. So let me lower the stage right now. Here's where it is important that your that your dummy puck is uh, you you sand it down some of your dummy puck, or else it will have a hard time going in. But the, this one went in just fine, so I'll just put it right there and lower it some more. And now I can add my my powder. Uh, conduct them in to make sure you add enough again that should be enough I'm guessing this is if my dummy puck well if this was 10 grams so I probably want to add around 30 to 40 grams okay and everything well now I want to lower this even more Twist it, and there you go. You start your cycle. Okay, so this is done. Let me take my sample out. There it is. And here's my puck. Uh, those are my samples in there, and it's a pretty, pretty solid puck. So let me do the other one. Need to clean this properly. I need to make sure I take off that layer that sits on the piece of metal. Okay, so put my dummy puck in there. This is puck number 39, and I put my samples on top. Start with the copper marker, just like the diagram. Start with the bigger sample at 0.8 millimeters. Go. Uh, the smaller sample at 0.7. And then the two smaller ones in their respective holes. Oops. There you go. And the same thing, just lower it. Pour more conductivity. Make sure you pour enough to uh, not have your samples get crushed. 
lower it all the way. Well, not necessarily all the way, but enough so that this can come down. Twist and start cycle again. Okay, so now this one's ready too. Uh, taking it out. Here's the old one. And uh, here's the new one. So this is uh, puck number 39. I need to label them later on. And it, the, uh, the copper block is I don't need a dummy puck for the copper block because the copper, uh, sorry, the aluminum block. The aluminum block will just stand right there. So, so I'm just gonna fill this in. Some conductament. Push this in. And uh, there you go. This, this was a case where I didn't remove all of the conductament on the side. Here you go. There you go. Put that in. And twist it and start the cycle again. Alright, now you know how to mount your samples. And just make sure you label your pucks. Make sure you lock your pucks. And make sure you don't move that stage up without the lever being perfectly aligned. Now, if you want to see how these samples are polished, you can click here. And I'll see you later.